So we're back now and staying with the concept of SWOT, you can see in Table 4.2 some factors here to consider when identifying your pieces of a um, SWOT diagram. Then on the uh, next slide, continue some of the uh, items that you may want to consider when you're then thinking about the weaknesses aspect of a uh, SWOT diagram. The last slide was for the strengths. This was the weaknesses. Uh, and then uh, continuing, uh, what are your potential market opportunities that could come into play? Sizing up a company's complement of strengths and efficiencies is really similar to constructing a strategic balance sheet, right? Pros and cons. Uh, where the strengths represent the competitive side of you and the weaknesses, the liabilities, right? So ideally, uh, the company's competitive assets should outweigh its liabilities or there's already trouble. And then this slide has the potential external threats to your future as a company. So um, again, sizing up the company uh, is going to play a role here and uh, you want to make sure that you can re remain competitive. So uh, the value of a SWOT analysis, it, it's going to help you determine whether your strategy has been effective in fending off or keeping back these external threats and help you position your firm to take advantage of new opportunities along the way as your company considers uh, changes. Now the third of the five questions uh, says, are the companies, is the company's cost structure and customer value proposition, are they competitive, right? And so from that strategic management principle, the higher the firm's costs are above those of any near rival, the more vulnerable it becomes. So the opposite is also true. The greater amount of customer value that you can offer, right? profitably relative to your rivals, the less uh, vulnerable your firm uh, becomes along the way. So the core concept then becomes the value chain to talk about. So the value chain analysis facilitates a comparison of how rivals, activity by activity, are going to deliver value to your customers. And so even rivals in the same industry may differ significantly in terms of the activities they perform. Uh, this is true in uh, antivirus uh, companies, for example. Some are largely signature based. Some are only uh, behavioral based. Some are hybrid based. Some are a combination of them. Those can be very different extremes. So how each activity is performed may affect the company's relative cost position as well as its ability to differentiate itself. So even a simple comparison of how rivals, uh, the rivals' value chains differ can reveal some competitive differences is the point I'm trying to get to. So this uh, picture from the book about the value chain uh, it shows the representative cost for various activities performed by the company called Bowl and Branch. They make luxury linens and bedding sold directly to customers online. You've maybe seen their TV commercials uh, on uh, the, the television, right? Uh, that's where I first found out about it and bought some myself, right? And this is showing their... Uh, uh, representative costs of very act various activities along the way. And so then we, we, as we see in this slide, which we saw back in week one, right? Remember, a company's value chain is going to consist of two broad categories of activities. You have the primary activities foremost that's creating value for the customers and these other requisite support activities that are going to facilitate, enhance the performance of primary activities. So the kinds of primary and secondary activities that constitute your value chain are going to vary 
according to the specifics of your business. Hence, uh, the primary and support activities that you see in, uh, in other uh, figures. Now, this uh, every firm's business is going to consist of a collection of these activities that are undertaken in producing this uh, in, in the course of producing or delivering your product or service. So all the various activities that your organization performs internally combine to form a value chain within your company. And so-called because of underlying intent of the firm's activities is ultimately to create value for the buyers, delight the customer, right, is the overall intent. Uh, and so you have these primary and support activities that we've talked about listed on the slide. You can pause the slide and review those at your uh, leisure. So uh, benchmarking becomes one of the things you can do. Benchmarking is a potential tool for improving your actor internal activities. And it's based on learning how other firms are doing the, the job and you're borrowing their best practices. So the comparison is often made between companies in the same industry, but benchmarking can also involve comparing how activities are done between companies, even in other industries, if you're doing a similar feature. So as a management principle, benchmarking the costs of a firm's activities against the rivals is going to give you hard evidence of whether your uh, firm is cost competitive. So the core concept becomes that of benchmarking and best practices. The objectives of benchmarking are to identify those best practices that are being performed on an activity. You know, if you're making steel, what are the best practices in making steel? And emulate those best practices when they are uh, possessed by others. That's become uh, using their best practice along the way. So. Uh, there are three main areas in a company's total value chain where the company managers try to improve its efficiency and effectiveness in delivering that customer value. One is the company's own internal activities. Two are the supplier's part of the supply chain, uh, the value chain system rather. And three is the forward channel portion of the value chain system. I think you'd get a little bit uh, out of reading uh, further about that in the book. It's very interesting. So the, uh, the lesson here on this slide is that the company's value chain activities are linked to the value chains of its suppliers and its forward allies. That's what I'd like you to take away as you pause and review that. So um, there are three main areas, uh, again, this slide is just sums it up again. The strategic options for remedying a cost or value disadvantage. And you can look at those three main areas again. Uh, your own inter internal activities. You can look at the suppliers part of the value chain system. And you can do forward channel portion of the value chain system will uh, bear you good information. Now, uh, strategic approaches to reducing internally performed value chain activity costs. It's about reducing costs that are going to improve your cost competitiveness. That's really the goal. And this slide lists any number of things that you can do to improve your company's cost con uh, competitiveness uh, w by acting on the value chain that we have been talking about. So supplier related cost disadvantages can be attacked by pressuring suppliers for lower prices. I know Walmart doesn't let vendors come and tell them how much they're going to sell their product for in the store. Walmart is so big and powerful that and it does its own research that it tells suppliers how much or vendors how much they will charge if they want their product in Walmart's stores, right? So supplier related cost disadvantages can be attacked 
by pressuring suppliers for lower prices. And that's exactly what Walmart has done. Um, but a firm can also enhance its customer value proposition through its supplier relationship by selecting and retaining suppliers that meet high quality standards. So once you're in the door, right, by maintaining high quality standards, uh, you uh, increase your customer value proposition. So um, now, improving the value chain activities of forward channel allies, uh, right? So any of the three means can be used to achieve better cost competitiveness in this forward position of the industry value chain. And those are listed in the first uh, three bullets. So the me, which you can pause and read, the means of enhancing differentiation through activities at the forward end of the value chain system include three points, and those are the following three sub bullets. You can engage in co uh, cooperative advertising and promotions with forward allies. You can create an exclusive arrangement. Uh, or you can create and enforce standards along the way. So uh, the strategic management principle that I want to apply then is that performing value chain activities with capabilities that permit your organization to either outmatch its rivals on differentiation or beat them on costs will give you that competitive advantage. That's a very important point just to pause and think about as a takeaway in our conversations. So uh, using, uh, with question four, using resource analysis and value chain analysis and the benchmarking we've talked about to determine your competitive advantage or competitive value and costs is necessary but not sufficient. That's a very important point. All right. A more comprehensive assessment needs to be made of your firm's overall competitive strength, right? And so the management principle to apply is that high weighted competitive strengths signal strong competitive position uh, and advantage, but low ratings signal weak position and competitive disadvantage. So listed here are a number of steps in the competitive strength assessment. You can pause and review those. They were in your readings uh, too. So, uh, and, and this table illustrates uh, a competitive strength assessment of a, a hypothetical firm, ABC Company. More on that uh, in your book. So, uh, but the point I wanna make is how to interpret those competitive strength assessments. So a company's competitive strength score is gonna highlight its strengths and weaknesses versus rivals out there. And it's gonna show you directly what kinds of offensive and defensive actions you can use to exploit its, your competitive advantage strengths and reduce your vulnerability. So a competitively astute company should use, utilize these strength scores in deciding what strategic move to make next. So when a company has an important competitive strength in areas where one or more of their rivals are weak, it makes sense then to go after more offensively and exploit the rival's competitive weakness. But when a, com and when a company has important competitive weaknesses in areas where one or more rivals might be strong, it makes sense to consider a more defensive move and curtail or limit your vulnerabilities along the way. And the last question was this, right? The final and most important analytical step is to zero in on exactly what strategic issues the company managers need to address and then solve for the firm to be more financially competitive, to be more successful in the years ahead. So this step involves drawing on the results of both the industry analysis and uh, the evaluations of the company's internal situation and to get a clear fix on what strategic and competitive challenges face your company, the shortcomings that you need to fix along the way, 
what actions you need to improve your performance and your business outlook. Okay, see you online.